In this video, I'm gonna be showing you my top five exercises for diastasis recti and how to activate your pelvic floor. Okay, let's get into it. So first up, I am Kelly Amanda and I am a personal trainer. I have three beautiful children who are extremely active and are always running around like crazy everywhere. But that also means that I've had three very different pregnancies and three very different births. I've had one natural birth. In my second pregnancy, I had an emergency C-section. And in my third pregnancy, I had a VBAC, which means vaginal birth after cesarean, which included some complications in that experience as well. So I've had a little bit of experience in pregnancy and giving birth and recovering after birth. But let's just review what diastasis recti is. So diastasis just means separation and recti just means where it is. So it's down the rectus abdominis, which are your six pack muscles. Just for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be referring to diastasis recti as ab separation. So what is diastasis recti or ab separation? We have the rectus abdominis that runs down the middle and that's your six pack abs that people talk about. Then you have your external obliques and then you have your internal obliques and then you have your transverse abdominis which runs all the way from the back to the front. These muscles are connected by the linear alba which is a connective tissue that runs down the middle of your torso. So during pregnancy as the baby grows those muscles stretch and stretch and stretch until they can't stretch anymore and that's where you get the separation in the muscles. So that's just the linear alba that's holding the muscles together. It's getting thinner and thinner as it spreads further apart. Also during cesarean, which I didn't know until I had a cesarean, as my obstetrician was explaining the procedure to me, he said, we're gonna separate your abdominal muscles. And I was like, what? You can't do that. I'm a personal trainer. So my doctor actually agreed to sew my abs back together after the cesarean was done. So you can get this separation through pregnancy or through a cesarean section. So they're the most common causes of the ab separation. So I'm just gonna go through how you can check for ab separation. So if you're not comfortable checking for the ab separation on your own, I recommend you go see your women's health physio or physical therapist, or you can get your trained personal trainer or fitness coach to check for that as well. You're gonna just lie down, relax your shoulders and your hands are down by your side then you're going to have your knees in line with your hips tracking all the way down to your feet so they're not falling out or they're not coming in so there's a natural arch in your spine and just tuck your chin under just slightly then you're going to take a natural breath in and exhale and just crunching up slightly now just check in between your belly button and in the middle of your abs to see how many fingers you can fit in between the gap. So I actually don't have an ab separation anymore. I have a natural groove in my rectus abdominis and I can just put my finger in there but it doesn't go down low. There's no ab separation there. So I've actually just come back from my women's health physio and she has confirmed that I do not have an ab separation. Just before we go into my five favorite exercises, let's go through why being able to engage your pelvic floor is so important and knowing that you are doing it correctly. So for some people, when they are activating their pelvic floor and they think they're drawing it in and up, they're actually bearing down on it because they're bracing their core and then it's actually pushing down. So I recommend going to your women's health physio and getting them to check whether you're drawing it up and in or whether you're pushing down on your pelvic floor and making it worse. Before you do any of these exercises, I recommend you go see your women's health physio or your doctor, or your physical therapist, because it's so important that you do these correctly and you're actually activating your pelvic floor correctly. Okay, so first we're gonna start off by activating our pelvic floor. So we're just gonna put our head in alignment. So looking straight up, then we're gonna relax our shoulders, hands down by your side. Then we want a natural curve in the spine. Then our hips, our knees, and our feet are all tracking in alignment so our knees aren't coming together or falling apart. Okay, then we're gonna take a natural breath in and exhale 
And as you exhale, draw your pelvic floor in and up. So about 5% of what you think it should be. Don't clench, just drawing it up gently and relax. So taking a natural breath in, exhale and drawing your pelvic floor up and in and the space between your two hip bones where a low undies line would be, just drawing that down into the floor towards your tailbone. Then you are sliding your leg out so it is straight and then sliding it back across the floor until you get that rough 90 degree angle in your knee. Alternating from side to side and remembering to breathe through the exercise. your pelvic floor by drawing it up and in then pressing your TA down into the floor or towards your tailbone so the space between your two hip bones pressing that down then lifting one leg up at a time making sure your knee is bent at roughly about a 90 degree angle engaging your core every time and breathing through the exercise So we're drawing our pelvic floor up and in and the space between our two hip bones, we're drawing that down into the floor towards our hip bones. Then we're coming up with our hips towards the ceiling, remembering to breathe through the exercise. So activating your pelvic floor like we just did, then we're putting our feet up into tabletop and then bringing one down at a time. Your knees are bent at 90 degrees and really concentrating on your TA, so the space between your two hip bones, pressing that down into your tailbone towards the floor and your pelvic floor again is locked in, breathing through the exercise. Again, activating your pelvic floor up and in, pressing your TA down to your tailbone. So the space between your hip bones is pressing down into the floor or into your tailbone. Then your legs are bent and one is going forward while the other one is going back. Remembering to breathe through the exercise. Again, I recommend
recommend going to see your women's health physio or your physical therapist to see which exercises are right for you. Let's all help each other out by recommending a women's health physio or physical therapist in your area in the comments down below. If you would like any more information about my programs or classes, click the link in the description below. If you found this video helpful, please give us a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next videos coming out soon. Click or tap the screen to check out my other videos and I'll see you in my next workout. Bye!